there were a lot of great shows that debuted last fall, but none of them were better, was better than Sleepy Hollow. It was just completely over the top, crazy resurrection of Ichabod Crane, one of literary's great figures. Only this time he's back and he is fighting crime and the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And so today we are, we are really pleased to have Tom Meissen and Nicole, Nicole Bahari to join us to talk about what it's like to be at the center of like the craziest best show <laughs> ever. So you guys are actually filming season two right now. Yeah, well, we started. I mean, not right now we, as we yes. sit here, but we started filming three weeks ago. So we're now just about to start episode three. Episode three. Uh, and yes, we thought we. So we'd okay. So when we left you, uh, you were in a box under the ground. You're stuck in pig purgatory with like a bunch of well, two, two the little, little girls. your little, your Versions yourself and yeah. your sister. Yeah. Your sister's lying in the road, yeah. possibly mm -hmm. dead. We're hoping very much not. Your boss has just confessed to like all the murders that have been Demon committed murders. so far. <laughs> Yeah. So. And our new best friend <laughs> is my son and the Horseman of War. Exactly, and yeah. your and your son is cackling away as John Noble, you know, having buried you in in the ground. So how I'm assuming that we all get out of our various boxes. How long does it take to get out and about? I don't. And are think you allowed? We can talk You're not about allowed. That. I don't <laughs> think we could talk about that. Wouldn't that like give up the goat in every way possible? We do um, have a lot of. Of, of work to do to get out of those boxes. Like, yeah. They really put us in some really strange predicaments at the end of the season. Um, I think what's really interesting in season in episode one is watching everyone sort of figure out the first step of getting out. Because that's everybody, all I can say. because <laughs> everybody who would help you is decommissioned. Yes, that's yeah, the thing quite. that was Even very his concerning. Wife, the witch, exactly. She's, she's like she's, our only she's hope. She's now been taken off by the headless horse. Right. Right. So yeah, I don't think it's a, it's a great spoiler to say that if we you get don't out. follow the show, <laughs> this, thank God, <laughs> this will really no to you if you um, don't follow the show. <laughs> but it's also the season it follows on from the consequences of being in our respective boxes and you have decisions that that some of us made to get us into those mm. boxes. What effect do they have on certain relationships? Were you worried when you filmed the finale? Were you like, okay, how, how are we getting out of here? My worry was that I wondered, what if the execs decide to do like Doctor Who, where <laughs> every time a doctor dies, a new actor comes and plays a doctor? And I thought, what if next season Ichabod wakes up but it's a different actor? <laughs> it's David Tennant. <laughs> exactly. So that's my relief for getting out of the box. Yeah, I don't know. I was just thinking that that they don't. No one else has used that conceit, and it's probably a very good. No. Thing. It, well, I'm relieved. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about when you when you you know joined the cast. When what was it about this show that said I'm in that made you say that that drew you to this crazy? Because on paper, and when we were hearing about what it was, we were just like, how is that going to work? I mean, it's That's so insane. That's what what drew me to it most was where, when I first read the script for the pilot and I didn't believe that it would be possible. So of course I want to be involved in that. And also I think it's important in your career to go for things that are really risky. Yeah. And Pete, you know that people will either love it or absolutely loathe it. Um, there's nothing worse than being Great. middle of the road. Yeah. People <laughs> saying, oh yeah, that, that show's quite nice. Um, fortunately for us, People seem to really go for it. And then there are people who hate it. And then there are people there who are. hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Which I means we're doing our job. Yeah, quite. <laughs> exactly. quite. It means we're, we're taking the risks that I hoped we'd be taking when I read the really ballsy pilot. Yeah. Were, were you surprised at the reaction? Because the reaction was kind of like, love it or hate it. Yeah. I mean, it was like, but love it seems to be... But even the people who said, who were like, we're not so sure, they were like, kudos. There are some moments that we really like. So. If they continue to watch, I think we'll work. We'll we'll, 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 we'll like wear them down <laughs> after a while, you know. What did you What did you like about Abby? I loved. I think what um, the writers were able to do, creating really complicated characters, and what could be a very one-dimensional world, because there's a lot going on. We have the history, the supernatural, modern cop drama, you know, family stories, and all this stuff. I think the fact that Abby felt like a real cop on television. Um, she's not glamorous. Um, she has a history. And 
the relationship that we have, even though we're surrounded by all this gobbledygook and, 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 and strange, um, strange boxes and archetypes and all this stuff, we have this really interesting relationship based on our, our love of family. So it's really grounded in a way that I think everyone can, um, everyone can appreciate and relate to. So that was the first thing. So I was like, okay, I can do that. I can definitely do that. And then once we establish that, I think all the other layers that come in make sense to people because it's based on the things that the characters really really need, that we all need, you know, safety, love, family, da, 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 all that kind of stuff. And then you have, like, a headless person coming in and fighting you, <laughs> but if you love your sister or your best friend, you can, you can withstand that, and you figure out and you find the resources to to um, become this warrior, which I don't think that she thought she was. And I think I've actually, as a performer, maybe changed quite a bit um, going into the second season because I think something about that storyline has actually affected me. You feel um, tougher? Not tougher, but I, I'm, I actually am inspired by her, her change from going to like a very safe cop on the force to somebody who's like, I only live one life, you know, and if this is what I'm supposed to do, do it, you know, with your <laughs> this <is> live, right? <laughs> Do it freely <laughs> and never look back. <laughs> don't hold back. Yeah, don't hold back. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's kind of um, the gift of this job and, and getting to work with someone like Tom at the very beginning. Tom was making these big choices and and like you know you know winking, having a good time, and making these risky choices and winking at him. I was like, oh wow, that, that 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 that's pretty ballsy. You know, but I but 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 I knew it was my job to be the the like grounded cop. You know, it's like that's my job. That's my job. It's like yeah. Even then, when when we're fighting demons, let's like stick your heel in a little bit. So that's kind of been what draw what you know. Well, what's in, I mean, two things are interesting me. about your you know the team of your two characters. One is that it's not a romantic you know, or it doesn't seem like it's necessarily going to go there because of course Ichabod is married and his wife is part of the program, and it's like. So, so that's really interesting. That's new for TV to have like a male and a female, both attractive leads who are not being, you know, that chemistry is not there. So it's more of a friendship, mm -hmm. Mm. and it's like you have to find. The other thing is that, as you say, you're the one who's supposed to ground the fantasy by being the real modern day cop. But you too are coming from a position where you don't know what's your character doesn't know what's going on. It's not like you're the vampire who's explaining this is how these things work. So the two of you are kind of taking on these, you know, very different worlds, and you're having to react to them in in very humane ways. So how did you guys, how did you ground that? I mean, how do you, like, stay people while there are demons and <laughs> a zombie George Washington? It's and one Christmas. of the first conversations that I had with Len Wiseman when I did the screen test for this was it would be so easy to approach Ichabod as kind of a cartoon because of the ridiculous situation that he's in. And we completely agreed off the bat, it can't be like that. He has to be treated in just as um, honest a manner as you would approach the grounded characters. Mm -hmm. And we have to work at keeping him grounded. And equally, if Nicole and I, if I may flatter Nicole in the way she did me, watching Nicole work, who comes from somewhere of complete honesty and, and truth, that's always, with my big choices, always remind myself, mm, keep it real, keep it real, keep it, keep it Bihari. Um, Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Um, but yes, I, I do think that's, that's why, why the show works, is that the characters stay grounded, and it's dangerous, they're in dangerous situations, but there are moments of flashes of lightness, mm. and always the show gets the joke. Mm. We we aren't allowed to play the joke. We can't play the joke that yeah. there's a man with no head running around and I'm 250 years old. The show can play the joke, but we have to play the truth. And that's something that we established pretty early on, like the first couple of days of the pilot, I think we discussed that. You know, bottom line, human beings are, 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 are brutal. So you guys get to enjoy us going through this, like, these hardships. <laughs> and, like, you know, it's funny watching us try to persevere. Basically, watch him uh, figure out, you know, how to wind down a window or taxation and things like that. Human beings want to see that. They're like, it's great. He's hysterical, but he can't actually send it up. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to stay with it. Right, right. The line about the, it was really early on where she, where you say the 10% taxation oh, on yeah. baked yeah. goods. 
<laughs> the revolution was fought over four percent. That was which actually, I mean, that's something line. that's something I get angry about personally. So that was, that was <laughs> and that you easy. want an upgrade on your phone. I love that that, <laughs> that he's not like it's not one joke. It's not like oh, I can't you know work these things. It's like well, now I work it. Now I want a better one. You know, that's I'm looking so forward funny. to there being a, a university course on. Oh my yes, that when they be... can look into the social commentary of all of it. Sumptuous. <laughs> what were was it? Was there any particular episode or scene in which you just went, "This is like that freaked you out," or that was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe we're doing this." There are there are some scenes where there's a lot of it, uh, discovery of things that are so absurd, and. D scenes where, oh, I've seen this chalice before when I was with such and such <laughs> fighting such and such a thing. We just think, oh my god, how, do, how, how, how do I do this? Um, and that's when we often go and sit in a corner and, and discuss and uh, work our way through it because that's, it's hard. It's a hard job um, uh, to do all of that and keep it fun. What about you? He does it so well, though, you know, because I, again, I, I sort of get to just look at him um, and, 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 and comment on whatever he's saying he knows. So he, he has, like, a mouthful of things from, you know, God knows when. And I'm just like, yeah, uh, really? So where do we go? <laughs> But you have your character and you have me. Yeah, and then I get to drive. You have the four white um, trees. You yeah, know, the freaky yeah. four white right. trees. Of course, of course. <laughs> the writers did discover early on that there's a new game for them to have where they can try and give me as many tongue twisters and bits of alliteration and he it, he as possible. It every time. <laughs> uh, they're determined to break me. And they haven't got there yet. But I know that they're trying. Okay, I have like a ton of questions from, uh, from Twitter, but I want to ask oh, one thing, which is awesome. that. Um, so are we gonna? Are the skinny jeans coming back? I, I you got buried wow. in your new threads, which was so. Yeah. Um, you know, you finally got your new colonial garb from the re. I thought that was really super clever that you tracked that was down inspired, wasn't the reenactors because I was thinking, wow, those clothes—they're just not gonna hold up for much longer. And so you got the new clothes. There, there may well be new clothes. They may or may not be coming from where you expect. Oh, interesting. But the, the skin, that was good. I, yeah. That yeah. was great. That was good. I, thought it was good. I thought it was dreadful. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna flash forward to like World War Two now. Is <laughs> we're just oh, gonna no. keep tripping back in time. Um, but the skinny jean thing didn't that come from fans saying why don't they put Ichabod in modern clothes and see how it that works? It was actually the writer of that episode, Melissa Blake, uh, who's an excellent writer but also likes to torture me occasionally, knows how much I despise skinny jeans. <laughs> uh, and so I decided, let's, let's stick him in skinny jeans. OK. Here's one from uh, Rhiannon. Uh, if you could pick any TV show for Sleepy Hollow to have a crossover with, what would it be and why? Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Ichabod <laughs> Crane riding, riding a dragon. I know, right? <laughs> I think he'd, he'd survive very well in King's Landing. <laughs> well, that's true. You talk a good game. Yeah, quite. I d yeah. Game of Thrones. Chopped. I want to see, like, Ichabod and Abby. <laughs> you know, the food I watched show? that for the first Chopped. time the other day. Yeah, <laughs> Chopped. Like, where you get the basket and you, like, have to make meals. And You've you got 20 minutes <laughs> yeah, to decide Yeah, both of us to make our meals. Make. That would be amazing to see what we come up with with our different baskets. That would be funny if the two characters somehow ended up on a reality show where they had to do oh. something on TV. <laughs> that would be to put... To put Ichabod on TV, Top that model. could be really, really funny. Um, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, from Reshma, will Crane learn how to drive a car? Were you driving? Did you drive last? He hasn't uh, been driving. No, no, I haven't been driving. Mm -hmm. or a but motorcycle. he's very observant. I, I'd be surprised. Will Abby if, uh, teach him? I wonder if he's against it. That could be funny. A driving lesson. Mm. We'll have a look. We'll look into that. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Uh, what oh, this is for Tom from Kathy Chelson. What part of U.S. history have you found most surprising or fascinating? That George Washington was a zombie, I think, pretty much. The, you know. um, one piece that I knew about Benjamin Franklin before coming over here, and it was one of the only we don't learn an awful lot about American history at schools in England, which is a shame because actually there's so much that's fascinating, so and so many rich characters which you know we get to delve into the one thing that i really loved i found it out from a book by um a linguist called mark forsyth and he spoke about um benjamin franklin having these things called air baths where he didn't bathe 
he'd just go into his um, study every morning, take all of his clothes off, and stand by an open window. Oh, my goodness. And that's goodness. how he <laughs> washed. Uh, so naked Benjamin Franklin. Uh, what about you? Was there anything that surprised you? Have you learned anything that you didn't know? Or... Oh, I don't because know. Because it does seem like it's really well done, where it's interspersed, real history is interspersed with, you know, total craziness. Well, most of what we've done is sort of putting a twist on it. So, mm. you know, I was uh, sort of a, a, a good history student. I guess the other thing was the Benjamin Franklin thing about, you know, him uh, doing experiments on bodies. I, di I didn't know that until we started yeah. digging into that. Um, those aren't things that we talk about in history. But for the most part, I get a lot of, um, I learn a, a lot of vocabulary from this character, from, from Crane. The, the turns of phrase mm. and, and um, I guess little bits and pieces about history, but most of it is kind of turned on its head, so not, 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 not really. <laughs> it's nice. There are lots of things that have surprised me. It surprised me everything I learned about George Washington uh, last season about his various graves, is mm. all of the different graves so that no one knows actually where he's hidden. I loved looking into um, Washington's spy network. I had no idea about that, um, and the you know the 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 balls out bravery of Paul Revere. Um, there was so much. It's such a fascinating time that we're very lucky to be part of a show where I just get to go and swat up on that as often as I can. Do you watch Turn the AMC? Because the, there's the AMC show about the actual spy network. Uh, funnily which enough, like, I which did get compared to sleep. I mean, there was just no way. But it's like, but it's a very straight sort of. You know, yeah, I, I, I love that show. Um, and an old friend of mine, Sam Samuel Rukin, is in it and being wonderful as always. Uh, but I auditioned for Turn before auditioning for Sleepy Hollow. And I was convinced I was going to get it because I had a dream about being <laughs> in revolutionary era costume. Oh, my God. And I was God. like, this is it. This. I'm convinced. This is the one. And then I... I got the, uh, sorry, love, we're going in a different direction than yeah. actors here so often. Um, and I thought, oh, but I was, I was convinced that I'd be in revolutionary war mm. gear. And then two weeks after that was offered Sleepy Hollow with revolutionary wow. war. That's amazing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You're, you're like a Sybil. I am. You are. I am. So I have to ask, I want to come back to one of the points you just made, but I have to ask because everybody is asking on Twitter, will you sing? Would you ever do a singing? Everybody says you sing so beautifully. Would she you does wow. sing. Oh, she has the most Is that right? Yes. Like three voice. or four people are saying, "Would you do a musical? Will you do a musical, musical episode? episode coming soon?" No, I'm teasing. We have no idea. I would be. I would love it. I would love it. I or at least sing, just let and her I sing. Be a mermaid. <laughs> that that was another question. <laughs> <laughs> we could maybe Wait, have. I saw, a mermaid, I saw a mermaid question, but I don't have my glasses, Why so I can't read my really my iPad. It. But yeah, no, and it's also uh, who somebody was asking. What Tom is your favorite? Sings as well. do you sing? I'd like a, a, so you could do episode, a duet? Yeah, maybe an episode where Ichabod and Abby join an amateur dramatics company. And sure, you must and play like the harpsichord. Sally Bowles and the <laughs> You could just sit and play the harpsichord and, and sing. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be lovely? Uh, that's free, by the way, for me. Thanks the very harpsichord much. scene. <laughs> uh, oh, here it is. So you're a Marvel fan. So what character would you play? Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't think there are any mermaid Marvel characters. No. I just want, like, I don't know. I'm going to not answer that question. I'm going to say I just want Abby to start developing superpowers. Wouldn't that be excellent? <laughs> you know? But like, like, yeah. Maybe that could be a consequence Some sort of, of connection being in purgatory. to the... Yeah, oh, like, you never know. You come out and you have some... Maybe she has, like... That a, actually makes sense. A, an ability to sing and animate dust. things, like things start moving. Or, I don't know. Who knows? Marvel right. characters. Or I don't just know. Have, a see, have, like, a, you know, flashback to a time when... Yeah. She wasn't present. That would be interesting. So why oh, the time traveling? I love the time tra tra traveling element of the show. Well, I would that, love to travel. I think time. there are so many shows that are period shows now, and 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 then there are also so many shows that are like kind of fantasy horror, you know, monster shows. And your show kind of, I'm trying to think. I think it may be the only one, except for you could argue Game of Thrones, that kind of brings both of those things together, which is history and fantasy. Why do you think we're so fascinated right now with? monsters and also times past I think mm. it's I think it's something that we've always been interested in 
uh, it's just now it's finally coming to the forefront because it's just wildly imaginative and I think we love to be uh, inspired and turned on creatively and this is a show that absolutely does it. I think history does it generally when you start uh, learning about world, how the world of the past yeah. and then it, you can transport there equally with fantasy and sci-fi you can transport to different worlds and so we I hope we can inspire people on all of those different levels I mean I, do, I love to watch shows that inspire me and send me off to dream about distant lands I, wo I said earlier I woke up this morning thinking of Tyrion Lannister uh, after last night's episode <laughs> Uh, and poor little lad. <laughs> Not the Viper? You didn't wake oh, up thinking man. about the Viper? That, that <sighs> killed me. I didn't see that coming. I haven't read the books yet. I'm waiting until I've finished the, uh, um, the, the, until the shows have finished before I read the books. Right. That shocked me. I didn't see that coming. I knew it would be bad as soon as he started <laughs> gloating. Pride comes before a fall. <laughs> and that was a horrible fall. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you must. <laughs> oh. What do you think about fantasy? Women do very well too in fantasy. You have strong female characters in fantasies, mm. you know, at a greater rate than maybe in other shows. I don't know. On television, there are quite a few strong women now, even yeah. in, in, in drama. I think that it could be this is a time when we're all like checking in. We're sort of like, where are we? You know, everyone's on, 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 on their gadgets and gizmos and they want to see like how they look and what's going on. It's, it's really refreshing to have someone who's not attached to that comment on where we are. So just having that sort of looking back from someone else's perspective as to where we are, because we're so busy in our little, in mm -hmm. our world doing the things the way that we've been doing them, I think it's refreshing to have someone say, you know, the selfie thing might be a little lame, you know, <laughs> like to have them say that, like, do you really need to take four, you know, in a day and send them out to everybody? like. What is that about? Where does that come from? And having someone from his perspective say that is just is 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 refreshing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I I also think that we have a lot of reality shows, and there's an idiosyncratic um, aspect to our show, even with all the fantasy going on. Like there's still really interesting people, and the monsters themselves. Like we had one monster, the golem, that was like a little puppy. He was like the doll that was mm -hmm. protecting. It was just. A completely different take on demon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was—it was, came from a really interesting place. So, I think um, the fact that there are so many layers um, makes makes our monsters and, and and our relationships special. And we have really good actors coming in to cover their faces in prosthetics. Yeah. Derek Mears, who was Golden, life. and yeah. is also Moloch, and comes back um, for season two as well. He's a really good actor, and so that makes such a difference because not not anyone could could go into mm -hmm. a costume and make it and see emotion through it. Uh, clever people, clever people. How is it working with John Noble? John who? John Noble. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I totally felt you that. Did. I did. I, I was surprised. Yeah, it's it's a gift. He's, a, he's such a classy guy, and he's done this before. I think the first day he was on set, we were doing episode five, The Sin Eater. Um, and he just, he just put everyone at ease and made what could have been a really difficult scene um, a cinch and so easy to just plug in with him. Um, and then he's just so much fun. He's kind of a naughty guy, you know. He's got, a, he's got a bunch of little funny jokes, and he's, he's adorable. Mm. <laughs> I have a crush on him. <laughs> so, do <laughs> so do I. So do I. The John Noble fan club. And also, it's nice. He's an actor who just, you watch him, and you play with him, and he makes you want to raise your game. He's so excellent and grounded and, yeah. um, and always thinking. And, it, you, you know, you want to play along. You want to keep up. At what point did you know his character was going to turn out to be your son? I knew before John arrived. Um, Alex Kurtzman and I had a conversation. He said, we're bringing a new character. He's going to be your son. That's all I knew. And actually, I forgot as we were shooting it because John was so brilliantly conniving at uh, oh, becoming, so becoming part of a threesome. And it just completely escaped my mind because he was just you know, lovely, kind Henry Parrish. Mm -hmm. And 
then I had another conversation with Alex uh, a little bit before the finale, and he said, so remember about him being your son, he's also the horseman of war. And that I didn't see coming at all. That completely shocked me. Uh, and the thing that really excited me was when he said how he picked the name Henry Parrish, that he'd uh, seen the sign on the church where he was right, you know, right. buried into the ground. Uh, and it's St. Henry, St. Henry's Parish, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that I just thought, wow, you guys are so clever. You had every, every detail mm -hmm. mapped out from the moment John arrived. And when you go back and watch the episodes, John's playing that. John, every, every little thing that we'd say, there'd just be a little flash from John. And that's, that's a really smart thinking actor. Good egg. And then there's the connection with Abby's family. Did you know about that? The or did that? Um, yeah. Well, it was in the pilot. The um, the four trees and and Jenny. Right. But the connection with the one of your oh, ancestors took oh, care yes, of yes, the yes, baby. Yes. No, that was new. That was new. I think I think in the episode in the haunted house we discovered a bit of that. So I knew something was happening. But I'm still not entirely sure what's what's happening there what actually. So I'm I'm sort of looking forward to finding out what where that goes. That must be when you get your pages and you find. When I get my pages, exactly, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. you find out. So I I have to ask this because I think it's coming from a local. But what's the best thing about working in Wilmington, North Carolina? Oh, the beach. You get to live on the beach. <laughs> the beach. Just live on the beach and have, have fish tacos and margaritas. Have you been to Sleepy Hollow, New York? Did you have you gone to Sleepy Hollow, New York? No, no I'd love to. Been to Westchester. Close enough. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, it's Westchester. It's the Westchester uh, Sheriff's area. Department. Yeah. But no, I haven't been. Yeah. No. We yeah. should go. There we you should. go. Road we, trip. We, we, we really. That's like long past due. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. And it's a Sleepy Hollow returns in September. Absolutely, you have to watch because we need to get them <laughs> out of the ground, out of purgatory, and back on screen. Thanks a lot. <laughs>